This is Dr. Aparna K.S. on microbiology and antibiotic susceptibility pattern in congenital nasodactylomatic obstruction. So this, okay. uh, very good morning to one and all. I am Dr. Aparna K.S. and title of my study is Microbiology and Antibiotic Susceptibility Pattern in Children with Congenital Nasolactimal Duct Obstruction. CNLU is one of the major causes of epiphora in children. The impotency can lead to stagnation of tears in the lacrimal sac, predisposing to microbial growth. Antibiotic drops are used in CNLDO when there is mucopurulin discharge. In India, there is a high risk of development of antibiotic resistance because of the easy availability of most of the antibiotics over the counter. So, prescribing appropriate antibiotics can prevent chronicity, antibiotic resistance and NLD stenosis. The microbiology profile and antibiotic sensitivity pattern, of, uh, pattern keeps changing with time, region and preferred practices. So, it is prudent to know the current sensitivity pattern in order to uh, guide the empirical choice. So, aims and objectives of my study are to analyze the uh, uh, microbial spectrum and antibiotic sensitivity in children with CNLDO and to determine at appropriate antimicrobial agents. This is a prospective study done in a tertiary eye care center in South India. We included 198 eyes of 170 patients in the age group of 0 to 5 years with CNLDO. We included children during their first visit, those who are raw plus positive and excluded all the previously treated cases. And 30 children coming with other ocular complaints in the same age group were included as the control group also. After detailed history taking and comprehensive clinical examination, microbial samples were uh, collected by applying pressure over the sac area and the discharge was collected from the punctum with a co sterile cotton swab and care was taken to avoid contamination from the lid margins and the specimen was sent for bacteria and fungi using standardized culture based method. Antibiotic susceptibility was tested with Kirby Breuer distribution method uh, for the panel of antibiotics commonly used in our population. Statistical analysis was done. Coming to the results and discussion, out of 198 eyes, we had a slight male predominance similar to previous studies and 84% had a unilateral involvement with equal distribution between almost similar distribution between the right eye and left eye. Uh, in our study, uh, out of 198 samples, 5% had no growth of organisms and 11% had a polymicrobial growth. And we had a slight gram positive predominance that is about 48% and remaining gram negative that is 40%. In our study, uh, the percentage of negative culture was very less compared to previous studies, maybe because we excluded previously treated cases. And hence the fact that not all discharges are infective must be kept in mind when a decision to start antibiotics arises. Distribution of gram positive and gram negative organisms are highly variable in previous studies. We got almost similar studies uh, to Usha Kimetol study done in 2006. Another South Indian study by Muthumalai et al done in 2020 which had a higher involvement of gram positive organisms. In our study the most common gram positive isolates are Streptococcus pneumonia, Streptococcus viridians and Staphylococcus similar, uh, uh, hominis similar to many of the previous studies and most common gram negative organisms are Haemophilus e, uh, e. coli followed by Pseudomonas and there was no fungal isolates in our study. In Muthumalai et al study, uh, the Staphylococcus epidermidis was the most common isolate. So it is uh, reasonable to assume that frequent use of antibiotics uh, that altered the conjunctival flora increasing the Staphylococcus epidermidis isolates as said by Dave et al. Among the control group, 80% were cu either culture negative or had only mild growth of Staphylococcus epidermidis. Coming to the sensitivity pattern, for gram-positive organisms it was highest for chloramphenicol, vancomycin and cefazolin and for gram-negative organisms it is highest for aminoglycosides. And both group of organisms showed a similar, and, uh, similar or uh, reasonably higher sensitivity for fluoroquinolones. Coming to the resistance pattern, for gram-positive organisms resistance was highest for aminoglycosides including tobramycin which is a frequently uh, prescribed drug among pediatric age group. And for gram-negative organisms, it was highest for vancomycin and cephalosporins. man whitney test showed that there is no significant difference in the sensitivity pattern of uh, both group of organisms for ciprofloxacin, ofloxacin and garifloxacin. 
Tobramycin is the commonly prescribed antibiotic uh, in the pediatric age group which showed higher resistance may be because of the in indiscriminate use. And chlorophenicol had a poor efficacy against gram-negative organisms. So, in 2011, American Academy of Pediatrics approved topical fluoroquinolones for the treatment of bacterial conjunctivitis and they stated that fluoroquinolones are safe and well tolerated. In our study, uh, we had both Moxie and Gatti had a higher sensitivity profile compared to ofloxacin but we would like to recommend the use of ofloxacin as the empirical drug of choice because of its reasonable efficacy and lower cost. So to conclude, presence of pathogenic microorganisms is common in CNLDO and investigating microbial profile is essential. We had both gram positive and gram negative organisms with a slight predominance of the gram positive ones and the fluoroquinolones are the most effective antibiotics for patients with CNLDO because of its coverage of both group of organisms. So with this study, I would like to emphasize on the judicial use of antibiotics, especially in the World Antimicrobial Resistance Awareness Week. So these are my references. Thank you. Okay. Dr. Aparna, how did you uh, take the control uh, culture? Um, you also had a control group, yes, no? Uh, how did you take uh, that culture? Children in the same age group for coming for any other complaints like refractive error, we uh, um, we initially we got uh, consent from the parents and we uh, just took conjunctival biopsy, uh, like uh, conjunctival uh, uh, sampling only. No, uh, like for other people, we... Uh, we have taken the, uh, uh, after pressing the um, uh, sac area, we collected from the Roplas positive samples. Otherwise, it is just a conjunctival swap for control group. So strictly, okay. that is not a control. Basically, the site of uh, uh, yes, the uh, source is different, no? Mm. Conjunctiva as well as the sac. Uh -huh. Okay, so it's not strictly a control. Uh -huh. And uh, you recommend, did you really c continue the study, like putting the anti, I mean, those antibiotics that were sensitive, what you s told as your conclusion? Was there any uh, effort to know the effectivity of that in the cases that you studied? Because it was a quite an impressive number you had, around 200 mm. cases. Mm. So, was it only to know the microbiological profile or not the clinical efficacy of the antibiotic aspect? After as that, we, uh, like, we want to get a, uh, like, we cannot believe on other uh, results. Like, in, uh, uh, the data from our population is very limited, actually. One study is in 2006 by Ushaki Metol. After that, one is 20, uh, recent study, but uh, highly variable results we got. So, we thought we will, uh, and Tobramycin is showing resistance also. So, we thought we should get our own data to st uh, start an empirical drug and main thing is uh, to avoid resistance uh, uh, itself. Uh, yeah, it's a good and nicely conducted study. Thank you. Um, and uh, the results are also, you have also given the recommendations what has to be done. So, only thing is, uh, like, uh, when would you start the antibiotics in all cases? Or when would you, how long was the duration of use? And when would you decide to start or stop? Uh, if, uh, like, ideally, uh, th there is no protocol for that. Ideally, uh, not ideally, like, uh, more clinically, we are do uh, we are prescribing whenever there is discharge. Ideally, we should go for microbial sampling if possible and uh, try to know whether it is negative culture. If we are able to find out any organisms, we should start according to that. And, uh, and duration is based on clinical, actually. Usually, it will um, need only for a week or um, uh, two weeks maximum like that. So it, it will help to prevent the chronic inflammation, chronic infection. Otherwise, the infection will be chronic and uh, probing also will be difficult in such cases. If there is chronic, uh, uh, the infection is for uh, prolonged duration, it, it can affect the, pro uh, like we are continuing the study to know about the effect of probing in these uh, conditions, whether long-standing cases or is there any role for microbiology in results of probing also that we are conduct, uh, like that part is going on. You said there are new cases. Nobody has used antibiotics before. Ah, yes, sir. And All you took up cases. to zero to five years. Do you ah. think a child coming at four years or three years, nobody has used any antibiotic? Uh, Normally, the pediatrician right, left, right, in center, no? Uh, so, that least, was very strictly adhered to, like, no uh, antibiotic usage. At least during the recent uh, uh, months, like that. Um, during consultation, child was not on antibiotics. Ah, yes. Okay. Right then. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Thank Aparana. You,